Overtime. You know, in this hobby, sometimes your friends turn out to be your enablers, and today's video is a perfect example of that. So the other day, I was just sitting there, not bothering anybody, minding my own business, and out of the blue, my buddy Liam from Retrobotics on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to his channel. Uh, Liam's also one of my co-hosts on the Coin Jam podcast. Out of the blue, Liam sends me a link to a Facebook marketplace listing uh, with a note that just says, this is screaming for you to come rescue it. And uh, let's take a look at it right here. This is pretty incredible. Now, I wasn't looking for this. Uh, I don't need this. Uh, <laughs> the listing says vintage Primal Rage arcade machine. We're looking at it. We, we can tell it's at least partially working. Uh, the description says as is vintage arcade machine from the 90s, still plays, but might need some cosmetic fixes and change or clean some of the buttons and joysticks. You pick up and you haul. So, uh, you know, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> not exactly, you know, the, the sort of game that I typically gravitate towards. Until I look at the price, they only want $100 for this thing. It's basically in my backyard. So uh, <laughs> I guess in this video, we're going to be picking up a working Atari Primal Rage arcade machine for $100. <laughs> let's cross our fingers and hopefully everything goes well. Uh, let's thank Liam from Retrobotics for you know tipping me off to this thing. So uh, yeah, uh, hopefully that sounds like fun. Why don't we hop in the truck, head out on the road and pick this thing up. Let's go! All right, successful pickup. We've got it on the truck. And uh, oh boy, do I have a surprise for you. <laughs> Looks pretty good, it's working. And uh, yeah, clouds look a little bit ominous. Uh, it's been raining earlier, but we've got a break right now. So I'm gonna get this covered up. Couldn't get the cardboard, cardboard kept sliding out, but uh, we'll get everything squared away. We'll bring this home and then we'll pop it open and uh, see what we got. But oh, do I have a surprise for you. Well, here we are off the truck and in the garage, Primal Rage made it home <laughs> in, uh, in good shape. And yeah, I am very excited to tear into this thing. Um, you know, we tested it out at the seller's house. Everything seemed to be working just fine. So I think this is gonna wind up being a mostly cosmetic restoration. You know, the cabinet is in, overall, I would say it's in, it's in pretty good shape. Obviously looking at this side, uh, part of the side art is missing, you know, big chunk has been taken out here and it's definitely a bit worn. Got some bumps and bruises and scratches and scrapes. Uh, the control box or the control panel box sort of has its own little piece of, of side art that's all worn down, I guess from people's you know, hands uh, on the side of the cabinet. Uh, the control panel overlay itself uh, has a pretty serious crack right here on the bend, uh, not atypical uh, at all. Uh, the bezel on this big 25 inch monitor, uh, it's got some creases in it. Uh, it's got a uh, operator sticker uh, right there. Now uh, look at that. Uh, Anthony Amusement ce celebrating a 25, 25th anniversary, 1976 to 2001 in Manassas, Virginia, not too far away from where I got this thing. Uh, the marquee, which is a translite behind glass, is all kind of you know toasted and, and burnt up a bit. Um, and down here, uh, the front kick plate, uh, it's got a, a lock bar uh, sort of bracket uh, right there. But uh, and we're missing some 
uh, T-molding on the little uh, bump out sort of, you know, stand uh, down there, I guess for, that, that was probably put there for balance for the cabinet. Otherwise it would be a little bit uh, top heavy, I would think. Uh, on this side, uh, this half of the control panel box, side art is missing completely, as is the entire left-hand side uh, of the side art. And again, we've got some bumps and bruises and scrapes uh, on the cabinet, but really, you know, overall, not bad at all. So I think what we're going to end up doing, you know, we'll, we'll kind of cover up, touch up these uh, bits of, of wood that's exposed. This is some sort of uh, vinyl uh, that's been applied. I don't really want to redo the whole thing, so I'll probably either use Sharpie or some black paint to kind of cover that up. Uh, we'll strip all of the old side art, uh, all of the artwork off, actually. I've gotten an entire brand new uh, reproduction uh, art package on order from uh, Galloping Ghost Reproductions. It's my first time ordering from Galloping Ghost Reproductions. Looked to be uh, pretty high quality, so I'm excited about it. It's taken a little while uh, for this to, for the, for the order to come in. I think I placed it a little bit or, uh, over a, a month ago, but I know it's a lot of artwork for them to print. I kind of checked in with them recently and they said they're just wrapping it up. So hopefully I'll get that shipping notification soon and we can apply uh, that reproduction artwork to this cabinet. I think ultimately the plan is uh, this will be another cabinet that winds up at my buddy Mark's Arcade. So uh, you've heard me talk about it before, but Mark and his wife, Danny, they own Back to the Media, uh, a shop in Winchester, Virginia that sells uh, used records and, you know, video games and, and all that kind of stuff. Really, really cool place if you're ever in the area. And they're building an arcade in the back. Uh, I've got a handful of games that are really kind of destined uh, to go to their arcade, and I think Primal Rage is going to be one of them. Uh, I think the game's kind of cool, but really doesn't have much uh, nostalgia for me. Isn't a great fit necessarily for my collection that really focuses on classic Golden Age games, but I think Primal Rage might actually do well in a public setting. So um, you'll be able to play this yourself at some point if you ever make it out to Back to the Media Arcade. Again, it's in Winchester, Virginia. Uh, coming around to the back, we have our uh, serial number tag here. Of course, this is from Atari Games, the Atari Games era of Atari's uh, uh, history. And this is serial number 1064. Uh, we've got an FBI warning here. I don't know what this thing is. <laughs> it looks like part of like door hardware, like from a house. Uh, we've got a little bump out for the Neotech uh, cabinet. Uh, again, I think this was a sort of an, uh, a design of a cabinet that probably went through a couple of iterations where they had to add this bump out to the back and then this sort of stabilizing kind of uh, plate on the bottom to keep from tipping over. Um, coming around to the back here, we have the power plug and switch, sort of in an awkward place to turn it on and off if you uh, have this game in a lineup, I guess. Uh, and then down here, there is some kind of um, vent that's been kicked kicked in, and I don't know if there was originally supposed to be a fan of some sort here. I'm guessing yes, uh, that's what that would have been for. But yeah, so uh, definitely, <laughs> definitely interesting game. Coming around and looking uh, again at the front of the cabinet, uh, we've got a set of over under coin doors. Uh, we've got a set of keys for the cabinet and our um, coin mechs. There is a, uh, a coin counter in there. Just grabbed a flashlight and it looks like it is uh, 047171, so 47,171 uh, coins or quarters or tokens or whatever uh, went through this cabinet. So we'll ask Professor Pac-Man to do the math as usual. We've got our coin bucket and uh, let's say it's got a little sort of uh, <laughs> thing to make the coins bounce into the bucket maybe. And we've got some, I guess this is the bracket that would have been um, the, the, the lock bar. We've got an extra coin mech and a pacifier and some various odds and ends uh, in there. Oh, I guess this was the, the vent cover uh, for that fan vent, but that'll be okay. So let me get, uh, get the camera set up on the tripod and we'll pop this uh, cabinet open and start taking a look at uh, how things uh, check out on the inside. Okay, we're around to the back of the cabinet. I've got the keys and uh, yeah, I've got still a bit of a surprise to uh, <laughs> reveal for this pickup. I think I might actually save it to the end and keep you in suspense. So uh, just a single key opens up the back and that whole sort of top half of the back uh, comes off. There's nothing on the inside here. Looks like uh, somebody might have tried to punch through this really thin piece of particle board, uh, which is weird for this bump out. 
you know, kind of designed to protect uh, the neck of the, the monitor from being damaged, but when it's such thin particle board, I don't know about that design Atari. So here's what we got. Uh, switching power supply with a fuse. Uh, let's see, distribution block right there. Uh, we've got a remote board uh, for the monitor right here. And this again is a, uh, it's a Neotech, um, let me check. I actually got, uh, in, uh, it came with uh, a stack of manuals. So two different uh, operators manuals for Primal Rage, plus this yellow sheet um, is a summary of self-test and uh, option settings. And then we've got a service manual for the monitor, which is a Neotech uh, NT, I think it's a 2515C. I don't know if we'll be able to see that uh, somewhere uh, listed. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, 2515C. Uh, big old 25 inch monitor. Um, I don't know if these have necessarily a great reputation or not. Taking a look at it uh, here and we have uh, a three prong uh, or three wire plug going to it. So I guess uh, this, this monitor does not need an isolation transformer um, to be operated. Uh, it has a serial number uh, here that again says 1064. So I'm guessing this is the original, uh, original monitor for the cabinet. Uh, just put some light on this uh, chassis. We see a transformer of some sort right there. This is danger high voltage and uh, yeah, uh, probably at a minimum, you know, recap this, uh, dial it in, make sure everything's uh, good to go. There's the flyback and yeah, some stickers here on the, the left-hand side of the chassis frame. I don't know if that'll be visible at all, but yeah, so that looks, uh, looks pretty correct. And it's very kind of simple on the inside. This lower back part, uh, doesn't open up at all. Um, and, you know, when I was loading it onto the truck, you know, lots of different things were pouring out of that, uh, uh, the, the vent hole right here, like the extra uh, coin mech and that um, pacifier and whatever. So there could be a bunch more treasures down there. Uh, there's a little handwritten note on this uh, switching power supply that says good as of September 1998. Uh, again, you know, this, this game seemed to be fully working uh, at the seller's house, so hopefully it survived the trip uh, to my house, to my garage. And uh, I want to get the uh, control panel opened up, because I think, I think this cabinet uh, has like a slide-out drawer, uh, not too dissimilar from like a dynamo, uh, where the, um, uh, you know, PCB and, 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 you know, harness and everything can be accessed, so... Let's see what we do with maybe one of these keys. All right, maybe I need to undo these uh, bolts here. So let me lock that back up. And we'll grab our screwdriver and undo these bolts real quick. Okay, that's easy enough. And then we can unlock it. Or how does it... There we go. Oh, <laughs> I guess it, interesting, it has to be sort of be half unlocked to open. This feels like a relatively thin uh, metal uh, control panel. Maybe it's because it's so large that it feels like it flexes a little bit uh, in my hand. So there's that. Uh, what is this? There's like a piece of um, pink wiring sort of hooked into uh, this uh, joystick. Um, I don't know if you can see that, no big deal. So here's our tray with our PCB and everything. I think this should just slide out, right? Oh, I got a piece of metal right here. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, I guess that maybe is to keep the joystick from flopping uh, around, or maybe there's a washer missing or something like that. But, you know, operators are always going to do whatever sort of hacks they feel like doing. Is this caught up somewhere? Is there a wire? All right. <laughs> I guess I don't really need to open it that much more, but again, it's basically designed to slide out. So you could, 
you know, potentially uh, swap out the PCB if you want. Uh, I believe this is a pretty normal uh, JAMA PCB. What's really interesting to me right off the bat is it's got a filter board. Uh, <laughs> I thought they had, you know, gone away uh, from filter boards uh, by this point in gaming history, but yeah, so it looks like a uh, three board stack, one large uh, main board, uh, two small uh, additional boards. Uh, this is weird, right? There's all kinds of additional header pins here and here and here and, you know, ribbon cable uh, spots that are uh, unused. So I don't know if this is a, um, uh, uh, a board design hardware that, you know, Atari used for other types of, other types of stuff, like a whole family of, of games. Obviously, I'm not familiar at all with this sort of generation of hardware. And, you know, at this point, you know, Atari in the 90s was definitely a different kind of company, so who knows what their uh, engineering standards were up to at that point, but let's slide this back in if I can get it. All right, I think that's in all the way. <laughs> you know, all, this is all made of particle board, which, you know, absorbs moisture and expands and interacts, and, and that's not great, but yeah, uh, I can see uh, in the right light maybe just a little bit of uh, Primal Rage uh, burn uh, on the monitor. It's really not really not too bad at all. I don't know if it's even going to show up uh, on the camera right here, but so yeah, uh, <laughs> that's basically what the cabinet looks like. Let me close this up and uh, line that up so it'll close. All right, and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, screw those bolts back in, but uh, and then I'll get the camera set up because I think, I think we're about ready to uh, fire this up and test it out. I don't think there's really any uh, good, easy way to access uh, the large sort of uh, portion at the bottom of the base of the cabinet. So yeah, let me get this button back up uh, and we'll uh, have it ready to uh, give it a first test. Okay, we're plugged in and ready to go. So I should just need to go ahead and throw this switch and ideally everything just turns on. So here we go, three, two, one. Something's happening. All right, our marquee light is on and there is our monitor screen. Okay, Primal Rage, <laughs> says version, I think it said 2.3. Uh, it's got free play turned on. You know, monitor probably needs to be dialed in a bit. Let me turn off the house lights and uh, where would I adjust? Where would I adjust things on this? Uh, I don't even see the brightness. Oh, there's brightness right there. I don't see like a typical screen and focus um, pot on this on this flyback. Uh, okay, and I don't really want to be messing with it too much. Uh, there's brightness right there. Yeah, that's brightness maxed out. Um, let's see. Okay, actually, I think I found, I think I found the screen and focus uh, pots. They're really kind of hidden. And I'm trying to see if I can reach in to adjust it. That might... That might be what I want. Yeah. Maybe I turn that up and then turn the brightness down so that it's not maxed out. There's that. Still have a little bit of raster lines. And now I think I've got the focus pot. How's that? How's that looking? I don't know if you're seeing this. <laughs> uh, we're definitely better focused now. Um, let me just mess with this screen pot a little bit more. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So let's come in here, take a look at what we got 
going on on the screen and uh, <laughs> play a little bit of Primal Rage. Here we go. Uh, and, you know, hold your horses. Don't get too excited. Yes, this is version 2.3. Uh, don't get too excited. I am definitely not an expert at any fighting game, let alone this particular one. Turn off the house lights. And uh, so get ready for some button mashing. I think we're on free play. Yeah, the monitor doesn't look too bad. Uh, yeah, I'll want to dial it in, make sure everything's looking good. Probably still have the brightness up too high. Uh, we might have a little bit of a grounding uh, issue. I'm seeing a little bit of uh, interference, but you know, overall not bad, it's fully working, so. Uh, interesting sort of design. We have uh, four buttons for every player, not five like Mortal Kombat, not six like Street Fighter, but it is what it is. And I guess, you know, obviously Primal Rage was uh, Atari's attempt in 1994, so a bit late to the game, trying to get into the, you know, one-on-one -on -one, uh, fighter craze of the early 90s with, of course, Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat uh, and the games in those series kind of leading the way. So uh, why don't we get started? Okay, who should I pick? Uh, joystick seems to be, uh, maybe it needs to be clean a little bit. Chaos and Blizzard. Didn't one of these guys have a finishing move where they uh, <laughs> did something uh, that I probably can't talk about <laughs> on a uh, family-friendly YouTube channel? What is it, Mitriate? Okay, what am I doing? All right, button mashing. And I do know that Primal Rage is supposed to be different in that it's a, uh, rather than having like, you know, button combinations, you know, where you like do a, sort of some movement on the, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, like, like the Hadouken, right? Half circle or quarter circle or whatever it is. And then high punch something. Uh, you're supposed to like hold and then do some sort of weird combination of, of buttons. Um, and I'm like landing almost nothing here. Nothing. <laughs> Maybe this is another reason why uh, it wasn't the most successful sort of game. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna turn the lights on actually so I can see the move set sheet. And sorry, it's not going to look as good. Um, let's see, who am I playing as Blizzard? How am I jumping by myself? Or, let's see, uh, air throw. Or am I supposed to hit these two? Air throw. Hold plus A plus T. What does that even mean? Away towards, okay. Freeze breath, hold. It says hold those three buttons or is the, the I don't even know what's going on here. None of these moves are working. Uh, mega punch. Oh, that's, is that the mega punch? Yeah, that's the mega punch. All right. Or can I, do I have to? Okay, that's my mega punch. There we go. There we go. Is that my finishing move? Nope. Well, <laughs> uh, Blizzard Conquer, so I finished something. I can't get this freeze breath move. It says I'm supposed to hold three buttons and then away and towards. But do I have to like hold three buttons away and towards? Because I can do that. Uh, mega punch, yeah, like that, but I can't do the, so 
there a button maybe not working? I don't know. When I die here, <laughs> I'm gonna start a two player game and just see if I can do some moves against each other. Or maybe I can... New challenger, okay. It'll let me jump right into a two player game. So when I do uh, chaos versus Diablo, sure. And does Chaos have the same moves as Blizzard? No. Okay. So let's see. Grab and throw towards. Towards away. Nope. Uh, then up towards. This is called Power Puke. Nope. Uh, away, away up. Why is he moving? Oh, that, okay, I did a ground shaker. All right. And now for Diablo, I can do torch up towards. All right, that worked. Hot foot. Uh, away. There we go. Okay. And Inferno. That worked. Maybe there's a, a button that's not really uh, working with uh, over here. Uh, up towards. Yeah, I think there's something weird with these uh, buttons. So I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on just to get out of this game real quick and see if I can do some of these moves with the uh, the other side. All right, uh, we'll start over here and uh, we'll do Blizzard again. Oh, but we'll, <laughs> we get a new challenger in. Okay, so now we'll do another two player game. I'll be Blizzard and there'll be uh, that guy. All right, and I want to get this freeze breath move. I'm supposed to hold three buttons and then away and towards. There we go. Okay. So I'm guessing there must be um, air push. Do we both have to jump? Is that what that was? Okay, maybe that's what that move is. Okay. Oh, Talon is now berserk. What moves does Talon have? Away up towards, away up towards. Uh, that was the brain basher. And then towards, down, down towards. Pounce and flip, hold towards, down, down towards. Okay. And uh, Frantic Fury, hold. Maybe I need to be close. Oh yeah, he doesn't have that. I think it's the lower right button. <laughs> doesn't move. Anyway, this is not a tutorial or a let's play of Primal Rage, just showing you that it is working. We'll get that button squared away. We'll get everything cosmetically done. Uh, I think this will be a pretty easy restoration. Hopefully I'll do it in one more video where I'll do all the artwork and recap the monitor and uh, clean up the controls and buttons and, and get, thing, everything, get everything tested to go to uh, Mark and Danny's uh, arcade that's gonna be hopefully opening soon at Back to the Media, again in Winchester, Virginia. So yeah, uh, I think that's a pretty good pickup video right there. And let me tell you, the surprise, <laughs> The surprise that I've been sitting on was, um, so when I went to pick up this game, you know, it was listed for $100, and I went there, and the guy gave me this whole story about how, you know, it was unfortunate, you know, I guess, you know, probably all too common, a divorce situation, and he had to get rid of all of his games, and apparently his ex-wife had already sold his Tempest, which was his favorite game, and some other stuff, and this was the last one he had to get rid of. He had to move out of the house that day, and I saw it, the whole place was empty. This was basically the only thing left in the house. And uh, you know, he helped me load it up and everything. And when I tried to pay him, he wouldn't take my money. 
<laughs> and I really tried to give it to him, like, hey, man, you're going through some hard stuff, right? Um, and, and he wouldn't take it, right? He was just happy that it was going to a good home. Uh, maybe he would have to split that money with his ex-wife, and he didn't want to do that. But uh, yeah, another game I got for free. I know, luckiest guy in the world I am. And this one is fully working, you know, just needs a little bit of TLC to dial it in and get it looking perfect. So uh, yeah, this will be a great addition uh, eventually to Mark and Danny's Arcade at Back to the Media in Winchester, Virginia. Hopefully opening soon, maybe in May, right? Right, Mark? Right, Danny? <laughs> I know Mark's been doing a lot of work on the games in his garage, getting them all ready, but yeah, so... Uh, I think that'll do it. If this is your first time at the channel, thank you. I uh, hope you liked it. We do videos like this basically every Sunday. Sometimes I'll throw a little midweek video in or a live stream or a short or something like that. I'm always collecting and repairing and restoring and sometimes playing these games, usually not uh, playing them not too well if I do that. But we have a lot of fun here. So if you don't want to miss any of those videos, hit that subscribe button to make sure you get notified whenever a new video goes live. Hit that you know, the bell icon and whatever YouTube wants you to do. You know, if you, you know, if you remember playing Primal Rage back when you were, you know, a, a younger person, you know, whether it was in the arcade or uh, the home conversions on console or whatever, uh, I think this even, they had a, a Game Boy port. Leave me a comment down below if you remember ever playing uh, Primal Rage. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you like this video, hit that like button. Yeah, that really helps me out, helps the algorithm decide to, who, you know, to recommend uh, this video. Uh, and if you really like what we're doing, you can buy a t-shirt or a hat or something in my you know, swag shop, the merchandise shop, uh, or the best way to support the channel, people are always asking me how to support the channel, become an Overtime Arcade channel member. Hit that join button down below, it'll tell you all about what it means to become a channel member. Uh, basically, you donate $1.99 per month, uh, Google takes about half of that, and uh, the rest goes to me. A uh, great way to support the channel, you know, I, I reinvest all that money into parts and, and stuff you know, for behind the scenes production, that sort of thing. And in exchange, not only do you get my undying eternal uh, <laughs> gratitude, uh, you get access to some awesome perks, including a monthly members only live stream. Uh, our, our April edition is coming up soon. You get early access to all new videos, typically uh, 24 hours or more uh, before the public release on Sunday afternoon. So you usually get these videos some point on Friday, sometimes on Saturdays, or some, no, usually on Saturdays, sometimes on Fridays. I'm actually recording this on Friday night, so this one's not coming out until Saturday for sure. And you also get access to our private members only Discord, which is a ton of fun, really active. Uh, you know, everyone's constantly talking about what they're working on, what they're playing, you know, deals that they're finding. You know, we're, we're helping each other out with, you know, parts and stuff, spare parts that we have that we're looking for. Uh, we do weekly tournaments where we play games. You know, MAME's okay too, right? Not everyone has every single game uh, accessible to them. So, yeah, if you want to learn more about that, hit that join button down below. Great way to support the channel, and uh, I really appreciate it. But you know, even just watching these videos is is all you know really I'm I'm asking for. So thank you as always for doing that. And uh, yeah, I think that'll do it for this episode of Overtime Arcade. As always, I'm Charlie. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime. overtime.